Those Days with the Monsters, Part 21 As Doc, who seemed a bit thinner than he had been before they entered Kuman space, moved quickly around him, Kirill found himself asking questions that he was probably going to regret knowing the answers to. So, you're saying the Kuman liver can remove toxins so well, you can use them as seasonings? Kirill's head spun. Do you just eat plants containing toxins for fun? And here, sometimes the same toxins are good for us in small doses. Kirill groaned, closing his eyes. That explains why your burning stuff made me sick. Doc's face twisted up. Kirill was starting to recognise it as Doc's irritation, regret and comedy blended together face. Yes, uh, uh, I regret that. That was a stupid decision on my part. What do you mean? Uh, just different biology, different toxin management, and clearly different toxin metabolism. I should have known from the beginning that you probably couldn't eat some of our spices. It didn't even occur to me. Kirill nodded slowly. That makes sense. He paused for a moment, remembering how Doc had said that the cumin liver did many things. So when you said it does many things, you meant the many toxins? Well, uh, no. Carol's frills flared. Wait, what? Handling toxins is one of the many things it does. What? Oh, it filters blood, stores energy, metabolizes food, makes proteins, including the ones that let us survive bleeding. It does all sorts of things. Carol's head spun. You don't do that in the bone? No, we make blood cells in the bone. Takes up most of the room in there. Doc approached Carol with another needle and one of the strong-smelling, burning pads. Carol winced, but allowed his blood to be drawn. We have to make a lot of immune cells after all. Carol felt odd thinking about it. If that was the case, wouldn't cumin bones be very, very busy? So, what happens if you break a bone then? We put it back where it was, hold it in place, and it patches itself. Even with something that important inside it? Carol wasn't good at biology, but with that many microbes he could imagine that the organ making blood cells had to be crucial. At the question, Doc bared his teeth, seeming very happy about Carol's insistence on understanding. Carol was a bit worried that Doc would be disappointed if he found out that most of the questioning was due to boredom. Well, we do have a lot of them. Besides, they patch up quickly, six to eight weeks usually. Carol took a moment to digest this information. Is it because of the predators? And weather, and needing to find food, and a lot of other things. Creatures that can't heal quickly don't live long on Earth. A lot of predators can smell injury, and they'll target those. They're easier to separate from the herd. What else can you fix, besides skin and bone and blood vessels? Well, most of our digestive tract can be repaired. A lot of injuries can be handled with some scarring. The only cells we can recreate at all are muscle and nerve. But our nerves are well protected and pretty adaptable, so a lot of the time we can handle some injury to that too. Now the liver, what we were talking about earlier, that can regrow from about half its original. Even if we lose half, it'll just grow back. Carol felt an abrupt wave of nausea and dropped his head back onto the bed. That doesn't work for appendages, right? If it did, Hook wouldn't have a prosthetic. Doc examined his sample carefully and flipped through the holopad. Besides, I can't imagine the havoc that kind of regeneration would cause if it went haywire. Carol blinked. That was a very unfamiliar word. The translator informed him that it meant electrical work for her before feed, but that made no sense. It was still glitching, and Carol found himself wishing he'd remembered to check it for problems earlier. What does K-wire mean? Doc made a slight amusement noise. That... I'm not exactly sure why it means what it does, but in this case it means that something supposed to be useful stops working and becomes not just useless but plain dangerous. So if regeneration goes haywire, what do you think happens? Carol paused, thinking hard. This hurt his head, but actually, that might just be the antibiotics. 
I... Would it just keep growing? It was a slightly amusing image, actually. He could picture a cumin hand grown to three times its size, and the mental image was equally disturbing and entertaining. Exactly. Doc adjusted a few machines. We get something called cancer. You mentioned that before, but I never figured out what you meant. Well, since we grow so many cells back, sometimes some cells don't listen to when our bodies say to stop growing back. And then they invade other parts of our bodies and, well, it can be hard to treat. Doc's face looked a bit sad, and Carol hesitated. He didn't want to upset Doc if this was a difficult subject for him, but Doc was probably his only way to get answers on cumin medicine. Before he could ask, Doc answered the question on his own. The cells that aren't listening will clog things up, put pressure on things that shouldn't have pressure, steal nutrients, and just generally break things. If we find them early, we can cut them out. And what if you can't? Then we poison them. Carol sat silently for a moment. When he finally spoke, his mouth was dry. But they're your own cells. Yep. Yeah. You'd have to use things that are poisonous to your own cells. Mm-hmm. You voluntarily kill your own cells? No other choice. Sometimes we do it to treat the cancer. Sometimes we do it to shrink the cancer so we can take it out. And sometimes... Sometimes? Carol was afraid of the answer. Sometimes all we can do is buy more time. Doc shook his head slowly. Buy time and make the patient able to do as much as they can before it happens. <sighs> he sighed heavily and turned back to the holopad's long scrolling list of information. Told you you'd hate it. Carol had more questions, but he got the sense that it wasn't a good time to ask. He had a lot to think about anyway. It might be better to wait. Thanks for listening to Those Days with the Monsters, episode 21. Read by me, a good bean.